Good morning, welcome to Christ the King's morning prayer service. This is Tuesday, April 26th. The opening sentence is from Colossians chapter three. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. The confession of sin on page 12. Let us humbly confess our sins to almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. We have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Easter antiphon is found on page 30. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, as in a day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is the people that err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, of whom I swore my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O oh, come, let us adore him. We'll now have the psalm readings and the New Testament reading. The psalms appointed for today are Psalms 132 and 133. Um, they can be found, or it begins on page 447. Lord, remember David. And all his tribulations. How he swore unto the Lord. And vowed a vow unto the almighty God of Jacob. I will not come within the tabernacle of my house. Nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep, nor my eyelids to slumber. Neither the temples of my head to take any rest. Until I find a place for the temple of the Lord. A habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Lo, we heard of the ark of the Aphasithra and found it in the wood. We will go inside his tabernacle and fall low on our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place. You and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. And let your saints sing with joy. For your servant David's sake. Turn not away the presence of your anointed. The Lord has made a faithful oath unto David. And he shall not shrink from it. Of the fruit of your body. Shall I set upon your throne. If your children will keep my covenant and my testimonies, that I shall teach them. Their children also shall sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion for himself. He has longed for her to be his habitation. This shall be my rest forever. 
Here will I dwell, for I have a delight therein. I will bless her provisions with incense. And will satisfy her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation. And her saints shall rejoice and sing. There shall I make the horn of David flourish. I have prepared a lantern for my anointed. As for his enemies, I shall clothe them with shame. But upon his head shall his crown flourish. Psalm 133. Behold, how good and joyful a thing it is. When brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard. Even Aaron's beard and went down to the edges of his clothing. Like the dew of Hermon. Which falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord promised his blessing. Even life forevermore. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The lesson today is a reading from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark, beginning with the 16th chapter, the first verse, the resurrection. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb and they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. But when they heard that he was alive and that he had been seen by her, they would not believe it. Jesus appears to two disciples. After these things, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And, as they, and they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. The Great Commission. Afterward, he appeared to the 11 themselves as they were reclining at the table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So when the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God, and they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and continued the message by accompanying signs. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle this morning is canticle eight. Essie Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. 
Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Apostles' Creed on page 20. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. This is the collect day, the Tuesday after the second Sunday of Easter. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now time for intercessory prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for our church and our, the neighborhood you've placed us in. Please unite us in love help our churches to work together and get to know one another and the people in them uh, to love one another with a true love that comes from you. Lord God, Heavenly Father, I pray for the pastors of the numerous churches that are within our neighborhood. I pray that they will be open and willing to work together in mission as a united Christian body that will open wide our arms to everyone in the neighborhood and those who are seeking. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we, we come to you in a spirit of thanksgiving for all the blessings you pour over us. We ask you to especially pour your blessings of healing and um, goodness over those in our midst who are ill and over their families who minister to them, that you will help them deal with these illnesses, um, both to those who are close at home and those who are distant. We ask that you would help us to know the right words to speak or the right words to write in notes to them that will comfort them and give them a sense that they are in our thoughts and prayers each day and uh, help us to be good Christian brothers and sisters to 
to those we love in our flock and uh, just let us know how to reach out to them. I lift up especially the memory of my father today on his birthday. And I thank you for his presence in my life. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for uh, the churches in our neighborhood and ask for that uh, you give us a, a common cause uh, for uh, the gospel. Uh, and we, we pray for opportunities to, to share your gospel uh, together. And uh, we pray, Lord, for uh, reconciliation if there's uh, issues between various denominations or churches uh, that are from the past, because we're kind of the new kid on the block. We pray, Lord, that uh, those uh, divisions or uh, issues will be resolved uh, by uh, looking to you and uh, knowing that uh, you are the Lord uh, of all and uh, that uh, we're all brothers and sisters in one family. And we ask, Lord, that um, our common witness will be uh, attractive to those who are seeking. And uh, we thank you for uh, the new people that we've been seeing here at Christ the King. And we pray for upcoming meetings uh, I'm having with uh, inquirers. And pray, Lord, that uh, those meetings go well and that those uh, who are inquiring uh, will be drawn by your Holy Spirit to become members uh, of our church. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. A prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant the requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.